We use the book to get more leads, more sales, more referrals. So this bucket of leads, there's two ways to do it. One is give away the book in exchange for contact information. Now that could be a digital version, audio version, or a physical uh, version of the book. And it's one of our best lead drivers. You know, one thing that I think is super interesting, especially for people that are entrepreneurs, is that you can use your book for so many different tools in your business. A lot of people say a book is a new business card. I think it's better than a business card because if you think about it, when you give someone a business card at a conference or, or whatever else, I mean, let's just be real. They're probably throwing it away within 24 hours. <laughs> uh, but you give them a book and they keep it, right? This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Chandler. Every single person listening to this podcast has a to-do list that is a mile long. I want to know why should a book be way at the top of their list for people that already feel overwhelmed? Yeah. I think a lot of people think it's not worth it until they do it. It's true. <laughs> Maybe you were one of those people <laughs> where it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't have the time. The timing's not right. I'm running a business. I've got a million things to do. But then you see the other side of it. And I know we talked when you were launching your book, my friend Dan Martell, I just did an interview with Noah Kagan. So many people have told me the same thing where it's not, I don't think it's worth it until I do it. And then I realize all of the things that it opens up on the other side of it, which I'm sure we'll talk in this interview, lead sales referrals for your business, like all these things. So yeah. that's what I see <laughs> is that it's, it's one of the best things that you can do to grow your business. It brings leverage to everything that you do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's dive deep into this. So first Chandler, how did you come to this conclusion? Like, why are you obsessed with books? Why are you the book guy? I'm, I'm an unlikely book guy. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a C level <laughs> English student and a college dropout with ADHD. So I hated reading and writing in college. I wasn't good at it, but then I felt like I, I, I went to college to learn how to run a business pretty quickly discovered I'm learning how to run a business from professors who have never ran businesses, <laughs> which mm, was so yeah. dumb to me. I'm like, this makes no sense. So I dropped out. But as I dropped out, I felt like I had, I'd ran a, a, a few businesses, one of them that did six figures in a summer while I was in college. And so I said, hey, I learned these things and I just want to teach it. And it feels like this might be a good mechanism to do that. And then I did it. The book did pretty well. Then did another book with my brother. That book did pretty well. And then people started asking, Hey, how are you doing this? And so that's yeah. where it kind of became, I became obsessed with books and, uh, you know, at selfpublishing.com, we've published about 7,000 books in the last, oh uh, nine years or so. So last month we published 84 books. Like we just do this all day, every day, but I saw the impact that it had on my life and on my business. And so that just, that conviction grows stronger. And then as a reader, like that's the author stuff, right? Which but as a reader, I mean, I realized that I was searching for a mentor and a book is a $15 mentor. <laughs> it's like yes. the smartest, most successful yes. people on the planet have written, have taken the best things that they know and put it into a book. And for 15 bucks That's and a it. handful of hours, I can just learn from them. So I started seeing, and sorry to go long winded here, but I, I just started seeing like, oh. if I would have a problem in my business, I would say, what's the best book on this problem? I would go read that yep. book and then implement that book in the business and it would work. <laughs> and then I'd do it again and yes. do it again and just say, all right, what's the problem I'm trying to solve? What's the best book that solves that problem? And then I did it. And so it almost like, I call it the college dropouts approach to learning. It's like I dropped out of school, yeah. but I, I acted like I was still in school. But now instead of going to class, yeah. I started reading books. And so that's where just on both sides, it's really opened up this whole world that I never thought I'd be into. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I can attest as an author that like authors put their best stuff mm -hmm. in their books. Because if you think about this digital era that we live in, everything has such impermanence. You can delete a post, you can edit a caption, yeah. all these things. And for so many of us, a book is like the first tangible thing that you're like, yeah. 10 years from now, this is going to be printed as is. Yes. And so I totally agree with you that like, we are really distilling down and like it is fully formed thoughts, strategies, beliefs written into these books. And it feels like our most important work because to the point, if you are going to write a book, it, it has to be important to you. Mm -hmm. Like the message has to matter. And so I love that you bring that up because I agree when now being on the other side, like people spend so much time, money and energy making their book 
the most important thing that they've done. And that's why on the other side of mm -hmm. it, they're like, I can't imagine having not done this. Oh yeah. That was, and now, and then I'll, I'll maybe flip the, flip the table on your side. What, what's yeah. been the craziest thing for you since you've published? Like, was there a crazy yeah. thing that opened up or like thing that you thought was like, hey, I didn't really expect this, but this has been really rewarding. You know, it's interesting Chandler because, uh, the other day I was at the trampoline park with my kids and we were leaving and a woman came up to me and said, I, I don't want to bother you, but I just want to tell you, I loved your book. And when I meet readers, mm. it feels like a whole different depth oh. of connection than just followers. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's because my book again is like the culmination of my stories and stuff, but it's really like this this manifesto of what i believe about life and what i want women to believe for their lives and so i feel like my readers are like in a higher bracket in that depth and connection and community and access to me yep. because they spent so much focused time with me inside mm -hmm. of the pages of my books and so it really does unlock next level of what you want people to know about you or how you do business or life or whatever it is. And so it's like when somebody tells me they read my book, mm -hmm. to me, like I just want to hug them because it, it means a lot that they spend that time with me, but that they also know me at that level. Yeah. And know you as that person, right? That was one of the weird yeah. things for me. I'd published multiple books, but it feels when this happened, but it feels like when it happens locally in your community, it just it's just different, right? And I had, I was looking at houses and I had my realtor introduce me or the person I was looking at their house, they're like, Oh, this is Chandler. He's an author. <laughs> yes. And it's yes. kind of weird. Cause I'm like, yes. okay, like I am that, but I don't, I wouldn't identify as an author. You know, um, yes. I would say like, Oh, I'm an entrepreneur or whatever else. But it's like, Oh, he's an author. And that was one of those weird first moments where it's like, Oh, in other people's minds, like this is a way bigger deal than I maybe even think totally. in my own. It totally is. Like I, had a recent flight and I was sitting next to a man who was probably in his seventies and we got to chatting and everything. And I was kind of explaining what I do. And I started with the podcast and the courses and all these different things. And then when I said, I'm an author and he's like, Oh, did your book sell? Okay. Like, like how many copies did you sell? And I was like, we sold over a hundred thousand. We hit the New York times bestseller list. All of a sudden, like in his eyes, he got it. Like it, it was just like a different level. And I feel like as an author, like that is something that everyone can understand. Everyone has likely consumed books or, you know, looked at books in a bookstore. It's, it's such a tangible thing in such a world of impermanence. And so, yeah, I totally agree on all of this. That's cool. Okay. So here's a question for you. So I have often heard of people talking about books like business cards. Mm -hmm. What do they mean when they say that? Mm -hmm. And why should our listeners really pay attention to this fact? That's a great question. Yeah, a lot of people say a book is a new business card. I think it's better than a business card because if you think about it, when you give someone a business card at a conference or, or whatever else, I mean, let's just be real. They're probably throwing it away within 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You give yeah. them a book and they keep it, yeah. right? Or at least, you know, yep. my parents taught me not to waste. So if someone gives me a book, it's like, all right, yep. shoot, I can't I throw it. this away. It's in, even if I never plan on reading it, it's in my office, it's in my house somewhere. Right. And every time I see that book, I think of them. And so I, just a, to me, a book is a start of a conversation, whether it's in person, yep. like I'll come to conferences or masterminds or meetups or whatever, and I'll have a backpack with some books in them. And if I meet someone, yep. I'll just give them a book. Or when I go speak at conferences, we'll bring a few hundred books and we'll give them away for free and we'll get hundreds or thousands of, uh, leads from that and a handful of customers. And so I think about a book is just, it's the ultimate business card because it teaches the methodology. It starts the conversation, uh, and it brings in leads, sales, and referrals for your business, which like, I kind of break yeah. those down in a few different ways, but it's, it, yeah, it's, it's the it. best qualified leads. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. I, I think the why is, and now some people are a little bit short-sighted where they're like, oh, this is just a business card. Let me just have a 20 page PDF. That's a sales brochure that adds no value, which that's not my approach. My approach is, uh, you know, give away all your best stuff for free and people will pay you to tell it to them again. Right. It's the, yeah. uh, let's say someone's listening right now and they've got a course or a coaching program or something like that. You've already written the book. You just didn't know it yet. Right? It might be in video mm -hmm. format currently, but you've got a methodology or a process that you're walking people through. And so 
my thought process is go 30,000 foot view. And, and obviously yeah. your course is maybe in the trenches because the, the common question people will say there is like, well, hold up. If I put it in my book, why would they buy the course? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But if, if you teach the 30,000 foot view and, and the book is more strategies, not tactics, because the tactics will get outdated and then you got to redo the book. Right. But the course is probably more tactical, but you teach them the methodologies and then they say, this is really interesting. I need more help. Um, or this is, you know, I love this. I'm sold on it. Can you just help me do this? Right. And so yeah. there's so many people who it's, it's funny. You talked about meeting that person that read your book. I was speaking at a yeah. conference the other day. A guy walked in, he was like, Hey, one of my clients, I told him I was writing a book and he recommended your book. I've been reading it <laughs> and here you are at this yeah. event. He signed up to work yep. with us, right? So it's just, a, ah, it, yeah. it brings authority. You've probably heard this, but the root word of authority is author. You can't spell the word authority yes. without the word author, right? And so in the mind of your prospects and customers, you become an authority, just like that guy on the plane with you that was like, yeah. oh shoot author yeah. new york times is selling yeah. author like, what's your name okay yeah. okay <laughs> oh i love that you know one thing that i think is super interesting especially for people that are entrepreneurs is that you can use your book for so many different tools in your business so chandler you were kind of referencing the long game here and one thing I think is so beautiful is in a world where algorithms are shifting day by day, strategies, tactics, like everything is always kind of up in the air. Mm -hmm. A book kind of roots you, right? Like it gives you roots. And I think that it's super powerful for a couple of different reasons. So one, you can be really strategic and have different call to actions inside of your book where right. you're collecting leads. So you're actually gaining access to get in touch with readers. Someone who is incredible at this is James Clear. Like that guy is growing his email list by thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers every single week through his book, Atomic Habits. Like he is like the machine at this. Um, and what's amazing is the book on its own without any additional resources is wildly powerful. Right. There's a reason why it's been like number one for like years on end. But at the same point too, I will bet you every single reader is wanting his charts and his diagrams and the additional insights that he's offering on the internet. Mm -hmm. And like you said, with a book having more permanence, then you can use this internet as a way to supplement content and keep things updated without having to update your actual book. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I want to talk about with you, actually, hold on, Matt, you can edit this part out, but Chandler, let's start there and just kind of dive a little bit deeper into that. Because I think a lot of people don't necessarily think about a book as like a lead generator or a way to actually like get people into their business. So let's right. start with that. Yeah. And so that goes back to the three buckets, right? Um, use the book to get more leads, more sales, more referrals. So this bucket yes. of leads, there's two ways to do it. Uh, the, the, you know, way one is give away the book in exchange for contact information. Now that could be yeah. a digital version, audio version, or a physical uh, version of the book. And I'll, yep. this would be a little bit of a long answer, but like w w digitally online, we give away the audio book and the ebook everywhere, all over the place. Yep. And it's a, one of our best lead drivers. But then in person, when we go to conferences, we give away the physical version. And so now all of a sudden, yep. you know, like I mentioned earlier, I'm speaking at an event. Maybe there's a thousand people in the room, three to 500 people. Boom. Just like that. We're getting their contact information. They're getting a book. And then yep. people were walking around the conference, seeing this red book, this red published book everywhere. And they're like, yep. Hey, what's that? So it just sparks up these conversations. Right. But then the point you alluded to is how do you um, turn readers into subscribers? Right. And so yep. for a lot of people, you know, entrepreneurs, business owners, you're used to, we're used to either pay, most likely paying for leads. <laughs> right. But then with a book, you're either getting free leads or you're getting paid to get leads. Like in the example you yep. used with James clear. And so that is call to actions throughout the book. Now yep. I've got a whole chapter on this in my new book published. It's like, Hey, how do you turn readers into subscribers? But for people yep. who are watching on the YouTube channel, right now i'll show you a couple things so there's a, there's a couple things that we do that work really really well this first one i know this might be a little bit hard to see it's like in the very yeah. beginning of the book i personally give the audio book away for free now what's the last thing you yeah. want to do when you start reading a book read the book <laughs> right you got five yeah. other things yeah. you could do but if i could listen to it on the way to work while i'm working out whatever i would probably prefer to do that so this has inherent value and right off the bat, people think, 
hey, I like this Chandler guy. Like he's given me this thing that's worth 10, 20, 30 bucks on Audible for free, right? So that's just like one simple way. The other thing that we do is what you see on the other side of that page is I give away a video summary, which this is really just my, uh, it's a summary of, the, of some of the core concepts in the book, but it's my best converting webinar, right? Ooh, so that's yeah. how we turn readers into customers, not just leads. Yep. And then some, one other super simple thing is we just have a, a page in the beginning of the book. It's kind of hard to see here, but we just say, hey, like you want our help implementing this. <laughs> book yep. a call with our team and let's chat. Yes. Let's put together a custom plan for you. And so those are kind of the three main things. And a bonus tip in here is like you've probably went on Amazon and done like the preview, like the look inside thing. Yeah. So yeah. If you do that, well, then guess what? We, we funnel hundreds, if not thousands of leads a month off of Amazon through that because they will look inside and they'll think Chandler's an idiot. He doesn't know that I can get his audio book for free. I don't have to buy this book, but of course I know that, right? And yeah. I would much rather have their contact information. That's worth more yep. than the two or three bucks I'd make on that ebook. You know, we pay yeah. 15, 20 bucks for a lead. Uh, and so yep. now I'm getting that for free instead. So that's, those are just like a handful of things that I do in... Um, that we teach to like, all right, how do you turn readers into subscribers? Okay. So we need to talk about this because this is so good. Here's why self-publishing is amazing is because you can do all of that. And yeah. we, in our last interview, we talked about the difference between self-publishing and traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. And I will say that you can be so much more savvy and strategic when you self-publish. And if you are someone who wants to write a book to have strategy in place to really play that long game, you want to self-publish because you have the ability to do things like this. And it's so interesting because I think a lot of times people will listen to people like me even and be like, okay, well, I need to get a book deal and I need to have an agent and I need to do all these things in order for it to be a success. And there are so many things that Chandler just said that are so stinking brilliant that will actually drive way more results than going the traditional route for the average person. And so I love all of this because it gives you so much control. You get to make those decisions. You get to make those calls of how you want to distribute your book, how you want to pay per lead, how you want to get people into your, your ecosystem. And so this is like a huge reason why self-publishing is so powerful. Yeah. And you, you can give the audiobook away, right? Which if yeah. you've sold the right yeah, to audio book, that. that's maybe not an option. So yeah, you're preaching the choir here. I agree. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, and and I I love this because I just think it's so powerful in in that you just have total control. There's so much benefit here if you're looking at. It. Now, the second thing that I think is super powerful about a book, and we touched on it but through a different lens, and so I'm going to kind of pivot that lens, is that when you have a book and somebody reads it, you are putting them in the position of qualifying themselves to subscribe to mm -hmm. your strategy, to your lifestyle, to like whatever your book is about, right? Like you are poising them in this position of saying like, here is everything. Mm -hmm. Does this resonate with you? Mm -hmm. And I think nowadays, especially in the climate that we're in, people feel like selling has to be like predatory and mm -hmm. like so hardcore. And we have to qualify people and we have to go after people and all of these different marketing tactics that really don't resonate, especially resonating among a more feminine audience. Mm -hmm. And so what's so beautiful about a book is that you get to put it all out there, but you get to poise the reader in this position of being like, oh my gosh, I do want to learn more. So let's talk a little bit about that side of it. Yeah, it's a great question. And so I would go, I would go back to those three buckets, lead sales and referrals, and I would put this in the yeah. sales bucket, but it's not yeah. to your point. It's not sales the way that most people think of it. It's sales yep. by adding value first. And so that's yes. the way I look at sales and not even just me. I mean, that's the best way to do sales. It's the rule of reciprocity, yeah. right? You add value. Yep. And so if you imagine like someone reads the book they think, wow, this was, if this was this helpful, I wonder what it's like to work with Chandler. I wonder what it's like to work with Jenna. Like, let me see what else she's got that I might be, be able to, you know, that I might be able to work with her. And so yeah. that, that's where it goes back to the, Hey, give away all of your best stuff for free, put it in, in the, the hands of your best prospects and the, they will become your best prospects. Like my sales yeah. team is like, Hey, if we, if we just, if people have bought the book, listened to the audiobook, or subscribed to the podcast, 
Like those are the three lead sources that are like, Hey, give us those calls all day long because <laughs> yep. those people yep. are bought into the methodology that there's yep. credibility and authority in who we are and what we do. And they want to work yes. with us. And so that, yes. I, I would just say like on the sales bucket, like integrate the book into most people have some sort of sales funnel or sales process. We put it, yep. the book everywhere. So it's like, Hey, if you okay. register for this webinar, like we'll give you a free copy of the book if you show up. Right. Or, or yeah. maybe you do it as a show up rate thing where it's like, Hey, if you show up and stay all the way to the end of this webinar, we'll give you a digital copy and an audio book. Right. So there's yeah. just like all these little things that you can do to just grease the wheels of your sales process in a way that adds more value, builds more authority and ultimately leads in more customers. Oh my gosh. This is so good. Okay. So I'm already anticipating the next question someone's going to ask and I'm going to frame it a little bit. So I was recently at a mastermind there's one woman there who had a book deal. So she was going the traditional route. She was like, I just like cannot make time to write this book. Like everything feels more important. Like I have children, all these different yeah. things. And it was so fascinating to me because like I was someone who literally wrote my book in like 20 minute increments. So I wasn't waking up at four in the morning and lighting a candle and like putting <laughs> Zen music on. I was putting my kids to bed and making and writing my book while my husband cooked HelloFresh in the kitchen next to me. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain people that like go to a cabin in the woods for a writing retreat. So can you give us like, if somebody is listening to this and they're like, okay, I think I want to write a book, but like, I literally don't even know one, how to make the time and two, mm -hmm. like how to structure that time. Where do we begin? Yeah, it's a great question. And I know we'll be, we've got a training that we're doing together that I'll, I'll kind of walk through that process of how to get started. I would yeah. say, I mean, there's, to your point, there's, there's two, there's kind of the tortoise and the hare approach, which yeah. Some people were like, Hey, I'm locking myself in a cabin for a week yeah. <laughs> and I just want to make as much progress as I can. Uh, I, I had one guy on my podcast or one lady on my podcast who she went on a cruise and, yeah. but never left her room. And <laughs> what? Like, like, oh my gosh. That's weird. And one guy yeah. that would book a, a round trip flight to Japan or, or somewhere in Asia. And he was like, cause then I would not be, I would not have internet. I would not be bothered. And I wrote the book. Wow. I'm like that's kind of an interesting. Did he just like get on the plane and then get off and exactly. get back on the plane? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Uh, is this guy, Peter <laughs> Shankman. Uh, who, yeah, who's, he's a, he's a funny, funny guy, but so that like, that's the approach that I think most people hear about, but to your point that that's, I love your approach, which is we yeah. have this 30 day rough draft challenge, which is, yeah. Hey, for 30 days, write two 30 minute blocks. Yeah. Um, now that's like an, a little bit of an aggressive version of what you were talking about, but let's say you write a thousand words a day doing that. Yeah. Well then in 30 days, you got 30,000 words done. And that's yep. most of the length of a normal book, right? And so it's just yep. about saying, hey, what are my strengths or what's the way that I'm actually going to do it? And then there's the yeah. short-term sacrifice, which we hear that all the time too, is like either the timing isn't right or I don't have time to do this book. And it's going to be yeah. a short-term sacrifice. But to, to the point yeah. that you made earlier, you have this asset for the rest of your life and long after you're off this earth. And it's a real thing, right? Yeah. It's not an Instagram yeah. post that might get buried in the feed. It's not a digital thing that's like, man, when I, when I die, this, someone actually uh, might accidentally press control alt delete <laughs> on this thing right, and it's right. gone. Right. The, but the book yep. is, will be here forever. And so it's just like this huge asset in your business, but in your life. And so, yeah, it's a short-term sacrifice, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting because, um, I wrote my book. So I think it took like two and a half months of like 20 minute increments basically. And That's I was amazing. about to be pregnant and pregnant for part of it and chasing a toddler mm -hmm. and still running my entire business. Right. And mm -hmm. so it wasn't this huge sacrifice, but it felt so meaningful. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's so interesting. What do you think is like the number one mistake that people make when they decide to write a book, especially if they're going to self publish it? Like what should people avoid? Hmm. I think the big mistake people make is they don't start. And so they mm. don't think that yeah. they can do it. And then after yep. that, so like, let's assume that they start, it's they either try to write multiple books at one time, or they just try to chase a bunch of different rabbits. And yeah. we found, obviously, I mean, thousands and thousands of books that we published. And there's this yeah. demarcation line on the rough draft. 
And yep. Yep. When, after I say this, it's like, well, duh, uh, uh, Chandler, this is not like a, a revolutionary fact, but that, yep. that rough draft is, is the, this is the point where if people don't finish yep. the rough draft, they never finish. But if they do, yep. it's almost like this big enough milestone where they start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And it goes from yes. this theoretical thing to, oh shoot, this is actually happening. And so that's what, yep. that's what we recommend for people when we, when we're coaching people, we keep them just laser focused. Like if it ain't the rough dra draft, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. That's it. That's the yep. only, the title doesn't matter. The book cover doesn't matter. Your, your marketing plan doesn't matter yet. Uh, yes. it's the rough yes. draft, the rough draft, the yes. rough draft. And so if someone's thinking about doing this, I'd say laser focus on that rough draft and just get yeah. that done. And then you can figure out the rest from there. I mean, it's so funny. Cause when I think back, like, so I, most people know this, but like I did everything in reverse intentionally because I want to be creative and I don't want to have time constraints or money involved in my creativity. And so I basically started my book writing process the last week of August. And I said, by December 31st, rough draft is going to be done. And like that just gave me like a timeline of like, okay, I've got to commit about this much. And one thing that I do, and this might be helpful for listeners, and I even have it in my phone today, is like pay attention when you're talking to people or different stories that come up that people are really engaged in or they're laughing at or they're understanding. Ooh, and I just have a note in my phone of like stories for a book. Um, and it's just like a, a bunch of different things stories that I can tell. Um, and so it's like having that as like a jump start. And it's like, okay, just tell this one story, like sit down today mm -hmm. and just write out this one story. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, so helpful for me. Cause it's like, I think a lot of times, especially women, we want to think so linear of like chapter one, mm -hmm. chapter two, mm -hmm. chapter three, four, five. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's hard to see the full picture. And so I love where you're like, let it be a rough draft. Don't think about how pretty it needs to be or what it's going to look like on a book. Like let the words be the words. Mm -hmm. uh, the title of my book didn't even come until like a month before my book went to print. The cover didn't come. Yeah. The marketing yeah. didn't come. Like you have to just write. <laughs> yeah. I completely agree with that. And I would say two or three points on that. Like one, yeah. I'm pretty sure we talked about this in the last podcast interview that we did. So guys check out, um, it looks like episode 645. We talked yeah. about the more writing method and the process of mind yes. mapping and all that stuff. And yep. so that episode will go deeper in that. We don't need to rehash all that stuff, but I would say to your point, Jenna, it's, yeah. I love the, you know, they say it's, what's it? Uh, facts tell story sell. I, I don't Ooh, know if yeah. you relate to this, but I'm a very much like, I want to teach if I'm, if I'm yeah. going to speak somewhere <laughs> or if I've got, you know, on a podcast where it's like, all right, teach, 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 teach. Like I, I wanted to leave no doubt that if someone showed yeah. up, that was extremely valuable. And stories yep, to me same. feel like fluff and like a waste of yep. time or like, Hey, I'm wasting people's time when they really are just here to teach. But then I look yep. at my own life, like what are the favorite talks that I go to favorite podcasts yep. that I listen to this? Like there's this really compelling story. So I've always been yep. wrestling with this kind of urge to just teach the whole time. And what I know is really probably better, which is adding stories. And so what I yes. started doing is it's very similar to what you mentioned. I'm glad you mentioned that it's like, all right, here are all the things that I want to teach, but then here yes. are all the stories that I could tell. And then you almost play yes. like a little connect the dots of like, Oh, okay, cool. That story, the punchline is this point, that story, yep. the punchline is this point. And so it just helps your book be more engaging and entertaining but it, it's, a, it, I love your thought of like the phone note, because oftentimes yes. when you're in the process of writing, it's like, well, I need a story here, but what's yeah. the story? <laughs> yes. And so it's just I having have a that whole story. Note of stories. And yeah. I'm like, or I'll tell something randomly. And then I'm like, oh, people were like laughing at mm -hmm. that. I guess I never, mm -hmm. like I told this story at this mastermind about how I randomly as a child wanted to be in 4-H for a year and my parents were like, we don't have horses or like anything. And I was like, I don't care. I want to do 4-H. And they're like, all right, we'll bring you to the community center on Wednesday nights. And I had to like learn the whole pledge and all these things. And I had to show my bunny at the fair and like everyone had these like purebred bunnies and I had this super fat, like overweight, <laughs> random mutt of a rabbit and I got a red ribbon and everyone else got blue ribbons and I got a red, which is basically like a consolation prize. And then I was like, <laughs> I'm done. And I was like telling this story and I was like, oh, I, I like people were just laughing. Mm. And then I was like, oh, like how many times in life do we get these random rabbit ideas yep. of like going? 
And, you know, and it's just funny because then I like made a note the next day. I was like, oh yeah, that was like a great story to tell. And like, it just helps for you again. Mm. Like I was just thinking, um, I'm doing an interview soon with an author and I was reading her book to prepare for the interview. And every chapter, I just kept trying to find the stories in it. Like I, I was, you know, going through it and every time it was a story about herself or her husband or her team member or whatever, that was where I was like super mm. engaged. And that was mm -hmm. where I wanted the conversation to be fueled by. And so I do think it's so powerful for people. Like we all have stories to tell. And I think we don't recognize that we're doing a disservice when we're living in this digital age where everything is in 10 second clips. Like mm -hmm. your story is so much more than mm -hmm. that. And it's so powerful when you actually sit down and ask yourself, you know, what have I been through? What have I learned? Like, what has life taught me? What am I still working on? Mm -hmm. Like what has been really hard? What has been beautiful? Like it just is such a legacy play. And I think a lot of us want to attach more meaning to the work we're doing. And I just feel like a book is like the best vehicle for mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And it's just interesting you mentioned that, Jenna, because that's a great example of how a story could have multiple meanings, right? That yeah. could be your yeah. big bunny story, or it could be your yep. red ribbon story. And yes. those might have yes. two different, it's like this creative thing that you've always wanted to try. And I got this big bunny, or it could be your red ribbon story, which is, okay, how many times in life have we went through this thing where we feel, we know that we're really just getting a participation ribbon, yes. <laughs> but yes. it was the start of a skill set or a thing that, you know, so just, yep. that's, what's so fun about yep. these stories is when you have that, that backlog, you can say, all right, well, this is a good story and it gets a good reaction, but I can, I yep. can say, where's the punchline in here in a way that serves the talk or the book or whatever else. Totally. That's exactly how I wrote my book is like story. And then I was like, what do I want to teach through this? And then like, what is a tool or something that someone can take away from this? And that framework just helped like narrow in mm -hmm. my ADHD brain of like, this could go in a million directions or why does anyone want to read this? And like turning it back to the reader. And I think too, people might not want to say this, but they could feel like writing a book is egotistical, right? Like you're just like focusing on yourself, but it's like, if you do it in a way, like your stories are really just illuminating someone else's life experience. That is a shared experience through a different something. Mm -hmm. And beautiful because it is an act of serving. And I mm -hmm. just think, yeah, it's such a beautiful thing. What would you say to somebody who is listening to this and they're like, Ugh! on the fence. I think I might, I could, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like what is your like call to action in the sense of like, mm -hmm. let's get people off the ledge here. Cause there are a lot of people on the ledge right now. Yeah. I would say uh, take 15 minutes as soon as you're done listening to this podcast and create a mind map. And, mm -hmm. and on that mind map, just list out all the things that you can think of on the topic that you might write about. So yeah. stories that you have lessons that you've learned books that you've read, ideas that you have, anything that you can think of on that topic and just do that. And yeah. what you might see, and we'll build on this in the training that we're doing together is like, I'll walk people through that exercise and then we'll say, Hey, how do you turn this into a plan? But what you yeah. probably will see is that you've got a whole lot more that you can write about than you think, but it's just that first process of getting it. I call this the more writing method. M O R E is an acronym and the M stands for mind map. So that first okay. step is just getting ideas on the, on, on the page. And I think for a lot of people that'll turn the lights on. Yeah. I love that. I know. I feel like it just takes like one act of courage for me. It was opening up a Google doc and titling it. I am writing a book, not oh, I'm cool. going to, that's cool. but I am writing a book. That was literally the title of the Google doc. <laughs> many, many, many. I love that. Um, and so it's just from going from that going to, to am yep. and really pivoting in that way. Chandler, where can everybody learn more about this? And let's talk a little bit about the training. So many of you gold diggers went through this last year and oh my gosh, it's just so powerful to see what is coming out of this community. And the legacies and the strategies and the missions and the messages. It's so powerful. So tell me a little bit about the training. Yeah. So we're hosting a training. It's in April. Um, if you're listening to this after April, it will evergreen it and you can go there. But, um, and on that training, we'll talk about three things. We'll talk about self-publishing versus traditional publishing. So we'll kind of peel that back a little bit more. We'll, we'll yep. walk through the more writing method and how do you actually get this book written? And then we'll talk about the three steps to successfully launch the book um, and so how do you act, actually launch it and get reviews and mm -hmm. all that stuff? So, um, that, that's the training. It'll be a lot of fun. Like you mentioned last time, it was awesome. Uh, yeah. we had a lot of, Amazing. uh, 
uh, just a bunch of people there and a bunch of people say, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to work on this book. And we've been working with them on their book, um, since then. So there's two simple ways to get there. Like the simplest is if you go to selfpublishing.com forward slash Jenna, um, we'll have the registration page and all that stuff. Um, but as like a bonus gift, kind of practicing what I preach here, um, I'll give a copy of my new book to everyone. Um, if you go to publishedbook.com forward slash Jenna, that's like, um, we'll give you a free digital copy and audio book. And then on the thank you page is all the webinar stuff. So either way, um, both routes lead to this training that we're doing and it should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, it's so wild because I never thought I'd be an author. I swore I would never. And I can honestly say it's my proudest piece of work and it is something that I've become known for. And like I said, it just feels like such a deep connection with anyone who reads it and experiences it. And it's something tangible. My daughters will get to read someday and just learn more about their mom and who I am at this stage of life. And so it is something that I had all of the obstacles against me for, and yet it was the most worthy use of my time. In fact, I think if everyone listening were to go to their phone and look at like their time scrolling, you actually do have time to write. <laughs> oh, <topic>. shoot. <laughs> um, oh, dang. Um, but yes, please go to selfpublishing.com slash Jenna or publishbook.com slash Jenna. And Chandler and I are just so excited to guide you. And to really show you how you can launch your book to bestseller status in three easy steps. And they are actually quite easy. You're overcomplicating this whole thing. And so let us just like pull the veil back and simplify it all. Any last things to leave our listeners with today, Chandler Bolt? Get started. Um, Get started. Start with that mind map. Show up to this training. We'll build on uh, that mind map. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I just... It was fun thinking about Jenna, your your daughter, learning to yeah. read, and then one of the first books that she re she read or that she ends up reading being your book. Like I don't know, just when you said that, I was like, oh man, what a cool moment that's going to be as a it's parent. It's crazy. It's like they're discovering yeah. more about you and about this new skill set of reading. I don't know. That's that's fun. I think of like if you think of all the people that you love in your life that you've lost and like what you would give to just like enter their life for a day, like. It book. is such a legacy play. And if your legacy doesn't matter or doesn't deserve time, then I think there's some reframing that needs to happen. So thank you so much for coming back on the podcast, Chandler. I can't wait to see what books this community writes. Me too. Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you have a quick second, take a second, make sure you're subscribed to my show. And if you love today's marketing tips, tricks, strategies, and life talk, then check out this episode. You are going to love it. So I was recently at a mastermind and we were on the closing day sharing our closing thoughts. And my friend Jim Quick was sitting right next to me and he said something so poignant. The topic was comfort zones. And essentially what he said is that there are two types of hard that nearly everyone is experiencing. The hardness that comes when you're stuck inside of your comfort zone, but also the hard that comes when you're trying to break away from it.